Hey guys, in this video we show you some beautiful fish and uh, tips and tricks making dingle dangles and pretty baits. And if you're new to the program, thank you for clicking on the video. We make fishing videos, I'm a noob, and uh, I find people with experience and they teach us some things that other people don't show on camera. And if you do like the video, please like and subscribe and share it to your friends. I just got 100 subscribers and I'm so excited. We are on a journey to a thousand, so stay tuned. Here, yeah, fishy, fishy. Let's see if our hole holds the cob. And hopefully, we'll show you that cobby as we learn and grow. So hopefully, we show you how we fry that cobby if it's small. The bigger ones we'll let go. Yeah. We're being optimistic. Woo, the water is cold. The water is freezing. So guys, we are on Kabuyo's beach. Gonna wear line a bit, so Kelly's gonna prepare bait here. Yeah? Let's watch and learn. Steal this one. It's a simple dangle. Very effective dangle. And an earbud. Pop that braid through the earbud. And then I tie a uni knot onto the braid again. Just a two turn uni. Pull it down and then put your finger in that little earbud and you get that knot to go down and that'll be the little loop that your sink hooks onto below your bait. Get rid of this tag in. Then you want to decide how long you want that dangle to be. I'm going to put a little squid bait on so I'm going to go 10-12 centimeters and at that 12 centimeter mark you just tie a little not in the braid, do two or three of them just to be safe. So I've got two little knots and I'll show you why I've got two sections of knots, why I do that. So there's basically your dingle dangle. What you're going to want to do, I'm fishing a BKK, it's a 7.0. You want to put it straight through the center of the braid, get it in the sun, straight through the center of the braid, four or five mils below that knot. And there it is. So if you want to add flotation, you can tie a bit of high density foam or surfboard foam on there to get it up. But the hole we're fishing here or the bank we're tying is a bit shallow, so I'm going to keep my bait near the bottom. And then when you're tying your bait on here, I'll show you now, I use that second knot to secure my bait inside the circle of more. So I'm going to keep that piece of squid fresh and cold. Keep the wings in case we get some duckbill and flatfish. Put a flatfish bait up later. Okay, so I want a little tentacle, so I'm going to give myself a little tentacle from here before I start beating it. I'm only going to use one tentacle. And then soft side up. Two reasons it makes your bait formable. And it releases a lot more scent. The soft side, the inside of the skin or the outside? The inside. The inside. The outside's got a little skin on it that makes it a bit tougher. You want to keep that little bit of toughness. 
So there is my dingle dangle. That is the length I want of my bait. So I'm going to chop it off here. Bearing in mind that your bait will always stretch a little bit when you're putting it on. So I'm going to start with my little tentacle. I want it to be nice and adds a bit of movement, vibration, visual, sound appeal to all those senses. Now I've cottoned all the way up to the bottom of the hook, then I swing it through and you see that little knot I was telling you about, that second knot. I use that second knot now to secure that tentacle on the inside of the circle so you don't have that tentacle flopping over the point of your hook and interfering with your hook set. So there we go, now secured top and bottom. Now I'm going to add my main skirt and I also take it up to that little knot so it covers that little knot. Drop it down, it should be the perfect length, yes it is. Then, just give it a little wrap, make sure it's nice and solidly secured to that dingle dangle, then I do that same thing again, I pop it over like that, there's that little knot, and secure that bait onto that knot above, or on the inside of my hook, just a couple of turns, don't get bananas. And then you want to pull it back around and close that skirt up all the way down. The reason why I cut that trapezoid shape to the squid is because I want to give it a sort of a sharp point up at the hook and a sharp point down near the bottom. For two reasons. One is it's not going to twist in the water and cause uh, my line to twist and tangle up. Got a little piece that stretches down, like I told you earlier, it always happens. Just give her a haircut. And you notice if I fish a squid bait, I use a white earbud. And if I fish a stinky bloody bait, then I'll fish a pink or a red earbud. Still trying to find red bits, but I uh, Debbie managed to get me some pink ones when I fish with, with a pink bait. That little piece you cut off earlier on, also put it on the diamond shape in the center just to bulk that up under the hook. Because you hammered it, it sort of blends itself in. And then you saw earlier, I cut two little triangles off to get that trapezoid shape. Those don't get thrown away. Because you'll see under here, I've got space for two triangles. And there they are. Presentation is pretty important. I like it to be perfect. First little triangle closes that gap. Second little triangle closes my bottom gap. And just adds a bit of bulk to that bait. So if we've got peckers around, they've got a couple of layers that they have to get through before they start getting the bait to actually fall off of the dangle. There it is. And another little thing I really like to do is I take this ink sack. I don't take the whole ink sack because there's a ton of ink in there. And I give a little bit of motivation to bleed. Uh, using thin cotton there, eh? Yeah, I prefer the thin cotton. Um, it disappears nicely. It's nice and thin. The thicker ones are very bulky though. You know, use them on shark baits and shad heads and bonny heads and things like that. But really not necessary on a, on a squid bait or a pilly bait. So there's the simplicity of uh, one of my favorite cob baits. You see my little flap. I'll never be able to flap and hurt or uh, cover my hook. And, uh, Bob's your uncle. Perfect edible rod. Nice. So, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get onto a fish or two.
That's how we stand. Thanks to Ryan for giving me the rod. I hope I can put it through its paces. And Kelly's on the fish. Dude, I got smashed right now as well, eh? I got smashed. Yeah. What do you think is it, bait? Fishy sharky. I'm not sure. I think it's not a feel like it's a good bag, so bouncing on the ground, so it's feeling this probably be a sand shark. Sandy maybe. Sandy, you called it. <laughs> Pretty rings on it, eh? First fish of the day, the little sand shark. Lesser sandy, sample size, but pretty nonetheless. It's a good sign we've got some fish on the bank here. Yeah? Let it go. Let's give it a go. Catch and release. Ah, Kelly's fuss again. Man. Nice when you see a rod bend. Ah, looks like a bit better fish. Yeah. Thank you, stringies. Don't get stung. What we try and do is you don't pull it above your <coughs> water with your wet mark. You don't want to the dry sand to take the slime off of it. You don't want to get too close to that bag at the back there. Top of his mouth, he's got a little flap there which you can get fingers into. Hold his nose, try not to lift his body weight off the ground, slide it back to the seat. Good breeze, he's on it goes. Like a man. Hey. Okay, my turn. Go, go, run. Run, 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 <laughs> run, road, run. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't run. But thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please share it to your friends. And uh, if we can get the numbers up uh, subscriber wise, it would be awesome. And if you guys like a video about a certain topic and so on, just wait it in the comments and we shall try and answer as many questions as possible tight lines